Hi there and welcome to the 18th workout of the 30 days of 30 minute rows. Now do not worry if you're like, ah, oh, 18, I've missed loads, I'm not doing this one. You can just start from here, you can do the rest to 30, you can start all over again, you can do this one and no more. It's entirely up to you. Now in yesterday's workout, I talked about how breaking up a 30 minute row into smaller chunks makes the time go by quicker. But it doesn't have to be big long chunks like uh, 15 minutes times two or 10 minutes times three. You can do things like five minutes and then something a little bit interesting and that's what we're doing today because we're going to do the majority of today's row at 18 strokes a minute and your pace is going to be that kind of 5 out of 10 walking upstairs pace or 2k plus 20 to 22 if that's how you like to row but after every five minutes I want you to do five power strokes that means pushing as hard as you can with your feet and trying to squeeze out as much power with your arms at the back of the stroke too but just five strokes and then you settle back into that lower pace again and just by only only looking ahead to those five minutes, it'll make this row fly by. I promise you. All right. So we have to get into a four minute warm up before we can start our row. So let's get our machine set up on a concept two. That means going to your drag factor and setting that to where you want it to be. If you don't know about drag factor, just set it between four and five. Okay. Cause too low isn't a problem. Too high is when it does become a problem when you have to heave against the stroke. And that's the way I want you to think about it. If you're on a non concept two, when it comes to setting the resistance, it's get it. So you get a nice feel from the stroke, but you don't have to heave against it. All right. Arr. Next up, set your monitor to eye height if you can so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down both of which will ruin your posture and finally set the foot plate height if you can so that as you come to the front of the machine your shins are pointing vertically okay if you're set too high that can get a bit tough too if you're set too low you go scooting straight past your backside goes out from underneath you you lose power and there's a potential of injury not a huge potential but there's still a potential <laughs> so right Let's get into this. So four minutes, we're going to start at 20 strokes a minute. And for a power point of view, I just want you to think about enough of a push from your feet as though you were standing up from a squat, okay? Because we're going to work on the timing between your feet and your hands. So let's go in three, two, one, and we're off. Now that timing is that your feet push into the foot plates at the same time that your hands connect the handle to your machine. So whether that's a Concept 2's flywheel, whether that's a water rower's water wheel, whether that's like just a magnet on your rowing machine, whether it's, oh, who knows what else there is. Whether you're in one of those fancy pants indoor uh, like swimming pool things that has a proper boat in it. But quite why you'd be doing that along to a row along if you can afford one of them, who knows, but anyway. But the point is you push your feet when your hands connect and you feel that you've, yeah, connected. Gosh, surely I don't have to explain that. <laughs> and if you have a forwards tilt and your arms straight, then as you push your feet, when you hold that position for at least half of your leg drive, the power from your legs just goes up through your body and into the machine. And that's how you get the power in. And so just think about pushing a little bit harder now I want you just to take the, take the exertion up so that it feels as though you were climbing up a set of stairs. So your heart rate starts to climb, your breathing rate starts to climb. So we're talking like Empire State Building kind of stairs, not just the stairs in your house. <laughs> and this is kind of the exertion you're meant to have in today's row. So you feel like you're working out it's important that you know that you're exercising, but not so much that you can't hold a conversation or that you feel you can't continue. Okay, three more strokes. We'll put one foot on the ground. Okay, one more. So let's unstrap, one foot on the ground, continue rowing and let that one foot that's on the ground be the improvement on your flexibility so that you can get into this shins vertical position at the front of the stroke and your body lean forwards and backwards is nice and open okay and fluid you don't have to round your back or anything let's swap feet oh. Oh. so yes yeah, so where your main pace is going to be 2k plus 20 to 22 or that walking up 
constant stairs feel when it comes to those five power strokes I want you to put everything into them but still at 18 strokes a minute remember okay that's important don't increase stroke rate just the power right both feet in tighten your straps legs straight and roll with your back and arms so swing over your back pull in with your arms and then push out with your arms rock forwards with your back so it's a simple swing pull push rock swing pull push rock but that push of the arms is nice and fluid same pace that you brought the handle in at you let it back out at now let's roll to the front of the machine arms straight forwards tilt and press out from the front holding those arms straight in the forward tilt okay try and avoid the desire to recoil backwards so don't push too hard and keep those arms straight okay keep them nice and straight to let that power come through and then work on that timing between the foot press and your handle connecting to the machine last one here so there we go so today's row because it starts off at that 18 strokes a minute 5 out of 10 effort 2k plus 20 to 22 it's not that tough so you shouldn't really need to continue to warm up because the first five minutes of the main row will then continue to help you warm up before those five power strokes so uh we're about to get into that half hour row of me doing it a year ago when i originally did these 30 workouts so uh, i will join you again in 30 minutes time for the cool down and some stretching right there we go there we are i'm back again not entirely sure what caused that but a little bit of gaffer tape seems to have fixed it for the time being anyway so what we're doing today is a 30 minute row and we're going to do this at 18 strokes a minute and run about 2k plus 20 to 22 pace which keeps that right down at that bottom tier intensity however every five minutes as a reward for being good then i want you to do five power strokes which means a good old full-on push from the legs and a good old full-on finish with the arms as well and then you roll back into the 18 strokes a minute and then you do it again and again and again so that five minute marker point each time we're going to do five power strokes all right just yeah just to make things a little bit more fun and that's it really so just uh start stop and just make sure and use this time um to really focus on your fitness and just let uh your your technique flow and things as you're going through this so hopefully this is just going to be a nice regenerative recovery row after yesterday's really tough top tier and then tomorrow's going to be a mid tier as well so and we're within if you're doing this within the 30 days of 30 minute workouts then you could just do with having that little bit of a uh less intensity row okay and without that being too like oh let's throw in a 30 second sprint and stuff it's like actually just these five power strokes will be enough to keep it interesting shall i stop yammering at you and shall we just start rowing together that's a good idea right so here we go then 18 strokes a minute at 2k plus 20 to 22 pace in three two one let's go i quite like especially with the 20 to 22 kind of bracket I quite like just falling into 18 strokes a minute and whatever my legs kind of feel they want to push out that's the pace I'm going to stick with so after 9 strokes 30 seconds gone it seems like my legs are wanting to row this at 2k plus 20 today although I did just drop to 21 there we go so let's just hold 2k plus 20 remember on sessions like this it doesn't really matter too much if you drop off a couple of seconds as we go through the workout what matters more is if you get a bit over eager and speed up too much and start to shift the emphasis or the intensity more like of this row towards a mid intensity on my pyramid all depends I mean there's so many different ways to gauge your workout 
there's doing it this way there's basing it on heart rate zones there's literally capping your heart rate using something like the Maffetone system but really all of the systems are just trying to give you a balance between building your fitness and your performance so today's session is really about building your fitness I mentioned once or twice over these 30 days oh well 18 so far of workouts that I look at your available energy like a big bowl of power I started to describe it like a a clay bowl being formed kind of like that scene in Ghost and every time you do a session like this that bowl gets bigger and it contains more power more energy as you get fitter you have more fuel for your workouts so that's what today is about it's about giving you a bigger bowl of fuel of power and then the mid tier and top tier are more about how you use that fuel but the important part is to make sure to return to sessions like this to help that bowl of power refill after an intense workout so yesterday was a top tier that drained my bowl of power and then although it refilled quite far after a good amount of food and sleep this session today will fill it back to the top and hopefully give me a little bit more power too okay in three strokes time we're doing five power strokes and remember it comes from the legs last one here we go five strokes push with the feet push with the legs so push that machine away from you keep your arms straight forward lean and then push there you go that's five isn't it <laughs> if I miscounted hopefully you manage it and that's the big technique thing that most new rowers need to try to learn is that your power comes from your leg drive from pushing your feet into the machine and that's why I was so big on talking about making sure your shins are vertical as you come forwards and talking about the timing of that connection between your legs and your hands because as much as I'm saying the power comes from the legs it has to get into the machine like I said so there's no point having a huge 
powerful push with your legs if you don't connect that push to your hands and the hands to the handle because if I push too soon what happens is my backside ends up at the back of the machine my body lunges forwards as my hands are left behind and my power dropped about seven seconds even though I was putting in the same amount of push from my legs because I completely missed that connection so really do think about snapping in feet and hands together and to be honest this is one of those do as I say not as I do moments because I still have a tiny well I hope it's tiny leak at the front of the machine where for whatever reason it's like I come in and there's a swing or a release of my backside that happens and it just goes away from underneath me I'll try to analyze that in one of the upcoming form check Fridays so I can show you what I'm on about if you don't know what I'm on about about form check Fridays every Friday I take a look at a video of somebody rowing and then say what works about it or say what doesn't work about it and what people could do to improve their technique if they were in a similar position and I'll also look at some really fast rowers and talk about their technique too so it's not just gym monkeys like you and me that we're looking at all right four strokes to go and then we'll hit the next power strokes one more here we go push with the legs okay so the power comes from the legs three four five and what you should have felt is that if you have that forward tilt over your hips and your arms are straight as you push with the legs you should have felt that the tension, the force on the handle as you push with your legs increases when you go for the power strokes but as long as you don't have your resistance or drag factor set too high I'm not saying resistance is drag factor by the way hopefully I left enough of a gap there as long as it's not or the weight of your machine isn't too heavy you still shouldn't feel like you have to grab and pull early that extra force 
that you feel as you push harder with your feet should just make the machine go faster it's a hard it's one of these odd things to try and describe to someone that's why I've started to liken it to what it's like when you hang off a pull-up bar when you hold on to a pull-up bar and your feet are off the ground you're not pulling on that bar you're just hanging off it and that's keeping you off the ground and so then when you push harder with your feet in rowing that hang feels a little bit more powerful more tension in it as though someone is just strapped a 10 kilogram weight plate to you and that hang off the pull-up bar now feels a little bit more forceful but you don't have to bend your arms in that position in order to be able to take the extra weight of that hang you just keep your arms straight and you just hang there until basically eventually this analogy wears out around about the same time your muscles wear out <laughs> but hopefully you get what I mean so as you push with your feet with straight arms you just feel as though you're hanging from a pull up bar and then only at the back of the stroke do you finally pull yourself up if you get what I mean to finish the stroke mixing terminologies there but hopefully you understand right six strokes to go and then we'll get into our third power strokes so three two one here we go power strokes push with the feet nice straight arms forward lean push one more good job and then the forward lean well that has two purposes the first one is that it helps that power from your legs just travel up through your body and into your shoulders into your arms uninterrupted because if you are like this as you drive you're suddenly taking it through your lower back fighting against the power Ooh, so let me catch up a bit there we go but the other thing is that as you swing your body from a forward lean to a backward lean you add in power so say your legs add in say I'm going to throw out random numbers okay 
100 watts of power. So push from your legs. Then, as you swing your body from a forward lean to a backward lean, remembering you're still connected to the handle, that adds in an extra 40 watts of power. 40 watts that if you rode like this with your back vertical or worse leaning backwards you don't get those 40 watts because your back's already leaning backwards and then because your arms are straight at the front not fighting with the leg power when you start your backswing and then pull in with your arms your arms add in like another 20 watts worth of power so you go 150 20 150 20 if you take my numbers with a pinch of salt and if you grab the handle early then not only can you not put in that power from the legs because you're fighting the power with your biceps but you're also going to lose that extra surge at the back of the stroke so your legs which might have been capable of outputting 100 watts are now only putting out 80 watts and your arms which were finishing strong with 20 watts are now really only giving you 10 watts and then if you throw in a poor backswing as well then you've gone down to a possible or from a possible 170 to 90 all because your body position isn't quite right as you drive and swing with your back and pull in with your arms Ooh. okay three strokes to go two more last one and then power strokes you ready here we go push so hold that forward lean push keep those arms straight push only pull at the back of the stroke pull push no other way around <laughs> push pull <laughs> i should just give up <laughs> Start back into normal pace <laughs> oh good grief john you're doing so well <sighs> um, again if i was of the tall persuasion or the equine persuasion or even if I was Cameron Buchan <clears throat> I'd probably edit all of that out <clears throat> but not gonna and if you wonder why I named Cameron but not the other two a fellow Scott good to support him great videos worthwhile checking his stuff out I mean as well as me not instead of me he's a super powerful rower one of his videos has him at I think it was 545 for his 2k So, a great guy to watch 
and aspire to but like I always say about watching people who are possibly a lot faster than you use their status, is that the right word? capability to inspire you because they prove that such things exist as a 5.45 2k but if you use them as motivation quite quickly it can go the other way around I mean, if I was to look at someone rowing a 5.45 2k and say that's my goal that's what I want to be able to do then but then I don't know I'd say three months I'd really quickly realise that for me that's never going to happen and that's if I was kind of going without the knowledge I already have that's what I mean because as a guy in his mid 40s and a lightweight at only 5 foot 11 ish it's never on the cards for me I don't think it would have been on the cards even when I was in my 20s if I trained every day as a rower I don't have the build to be that fast and once you realise that if you set your motivation unrealistically then it can really damage your motivation to row whereas if you take someone rowing that fast as inspiration but then just set your sights on micro goals so if my 2k was 7 minutes and 5 seconds my real goal would just to be sub 7 and then possibly under 655 650, 645 small goals and that way you can see them and they're not unachievable okay four three two one here we go power push with the legs arms straight swing over your hips halfway through the leg drive swing and then pull at the end pull all done <clears throat> now with 17 seconds to go on the clock that's time for five more power strokes so although it breaks the five minutes rule on today's row it does mean you get in an extra set of five strokes and talking of motivation you'll be or maybe not unsurprised but it is funny how you can squeeze a little bit more power out when taken by surprise <clears throat> like if I was rowing this session and you're starting to feel a little bit fatigued and you're looking at three and a half minutes to go and thinking oh, I'm quite pleased it's going to be over I can just about manage this rate and pace until the end yeah but then 
I suddenly throw at you that the last minute we're gonna sprint don't worry we're not gonna I'm just using this as an example but then suddenly you're having to pull yourself up energize yourself almost get that adrenaline running to be prepared for that big sprint at the end because it's easy to just almost circle circle the bowl of power and tell yourself that oh, I'm getting tired and all that stuff but then when someone comes along and says right let's sprint let's have a race something like that then you get energy and power that you kind of you were not letting come in because you were too busy circling that to the bottom of the bowl of power it's not quite as applicable in a rule like this because you should have loads and loads and loads of fitness that you shouldn't need to stop once we get to 30 minutes done this should only have used a maximum of half of your bowl of power but if this was a like a six times five minute tempo row at 2k plus eight pace you would be on the ragged edge of it and starting to feel like voice is getting a bit much but then when someone says right once you're done that last minute sprint it's easy to just open your eyes and go for it and that's what you need at the end of like a 2k or a 5 or a 10 a 30 minute is to still be able to have that sprint in you at the very end no matter how tired you're telling yourself you are okay power strokes coming up now power five power four power three power two last one power one Woo. so a bit of a meandering chat today between technique and motivation and stuff but hopefully and also uh, gotta fix this microphone what's wrong here it's always microphone issues I have it's always the sound department the camera department hardly ever lets me down but sound department does so I hope you enjoyed that row I know I did it just kind of warmed me up it's freezing cold in the studio that's why I've still got the hoodie on um, but it was a, a great row those five power strokes really do kind of break up that half hour row because you're only ever looking forward those five minutes you're not looking at that whole half hour so shall we get into a two minute cool down you shouldn't need that uh, long between the warm up and the cool down hopefully you just uh, you managed to kind of sort, sort yourself out have a quick drink Wiggle your backside, make sure you're nice and comfortable. And then we'll get into this two minute cool down and then we'll do a little bit of stretching at the end, okay? So here we go then. In three, two, one, let's go. So we'll do this, run about 20 strokes a minute again. Pretty much actually the same pace you're doing the warm up at. So just enough of a pace that you're going a little bit easier than you were doing the main row at just then in terms of your perceived exertion. Because you're just wanting to kind of try to think of a good phrase for it. I keep on saying slide into neutral, but that doesn't mean anything. You're literally just letting things cool down. You've been nice and warm and working hard. And rather than just stopping and everything going, oh, we're done now, you use this as a, a, gr a graduation 
that you're gradually cooling down. Your heart rate will have dropped quite a lot between the end of the row and starting this cool down. And then this cool down should kind of just hit you at kind of stasis for that heart rate through this two minutes. Almost hits pause on it from dropping too far. And so it sits around on this little ledge for two minutes and then it can cool down to the resting heart rate after this. It gives your muscles a chance to just flush themselves out and straighten themselves off and gives you a chance to just kind of consolidate technique, anything that maybe you've been working on in that main row, maybe it was trying to hold this forwards tilt and straight arms and so now that the exertion is a little bit less you can really think about that rather than trying to hold a specific pace okay two more strokes one more oh I've still not warmed up I should start getting like a a warm bath before I come out <laughs> then you just see steam coming off me so I'm done with the cool down you of course can keep on cooling down you don't have to stop just because I have uh, however I'm about to enter the stretching section now if you don't have time to stretch please at least stretch your quads your hamstrings and if you have time your glutes as well okay because they're they if you're rowing properly they take the lion's share of the the work when you're rowing okay um or you can it's all right didn't say it you hold on a minute if you are going to stretch, um, don't do it in the shower, okay? I don't want you to slip and fall over, okay? Right, can play him again? There he goes. So, Stretchy John uh, is going to take you through some guided stretching if you have access to a stretching mat, and I will take you through some guided stretching on the machine, okay? If you don't have room for a stretching mat. So, put your feet back in the foot plates, but keep the straps loose. Brace your feet against them. Legs nice and straight. Put your hands up in the air and fold forwards, okay? And if you get that fold right, if you get the kind of the, that hinging feeling between uh, as you come forwards, you should find you get that nice stretch in the front. Please try and res resist the urge uh, on this stretch, especially because you're slightly pitched down anyway. Um, resist the urge to kind of grab onto your ankles and pull yourself forwards or to grab onto your toes and pull yourself forwards. There's a time and place for that stretch and this isn't it, okay? This is definitely one that's all about just folding yourself forwards, okay? And you get that stretch right into your hamstrings, right? So move on to glutes next. One leg up onto the rail. Bring the other foot across onto your knee so that your heel is in the crook of your knee. Bring that knee across your body so it's in a straight line between your face, knee, foot. Hold it in place with one arm. Hold on to the back of the machine for stability if you wish. And then rotate round, okay? And that rotation of your upper body, um, especially if you kind of put a little bit of focus downwards into your uh, backside, into your glutes, you should get a nice stretch there. I can feel like my whole kind of that kind of backside area basically. And it, like that kind of, that stretchy sensation. There's only really one way to describe it as a stretching sensation because it's not like, it's not like pain. It's not like, it doesn't feel like it's effort as though you're working out. You just, you can feel that kind of, it's not like a burn. I'm trying to think of a, a like surge. It's not either a way to describe a stretch, that sensation of, because it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's like, answers in the postcard. Right, here we go, bring the, let's change legs. So exact same thing, but other leg and rotate round. Pressure, no, it's not really that. I remember uh, when uh, my wife was um, preparing, let's say, for the first, for the birth of our first child. Um, she was very clear to the midwife to des describe everything is pressure and not pain. It's like, when you start to feel pressure, then you can do this and whatever. Cause she was like, she was dead against the thought of what you go through in childbirth being pain. It's like, pain is something you fight against and you try to stop and you don't work with. It's like, it's, it's frightening. Whereas pressure, albeit maybe understating what a woman goes through in childbirth, don't worry. 
But from a mindset point of view, pressure, as intense as it is, you can deal with pain as something to fear. So that was Julie's point of view. So that's why I don't talk about pressure for that. Sorry, I don't want to be mansplaining this kind of stuff because I have absolutely no right to be talking about childbirth stuff. Okay, uh, let's do quads next. So um, you rest a hand on the monitor for stability if you wish, which I always do because I tend to fall over at this point. Flick your leg up behind you so that your heel is touching your backside. And then again, put on a nice little pull back of your leg um, or backwards with your whoops with your leg holding up to your holding on to your upper foot and that should create that stretching sensation again um, in your quads now that's the big meaty muscle um, on the front of your leg it's not up at the high part not up whoa, it's gonna fall <coughs> I meant that because I'm gonna change legs <coughs> honest <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not up here in the hip flexor what's gone wrong with my balance today um, it's because it's, it's so cold, I promise you. It's not up here in the, the hip flexor, it's down here in the quads. I can definitely feel that this muscle up here is, um, inverted commas, loose. It's not being kind of activated and stretched, it's just there. It's, like, it's obviously tighter than loose, but it's not like my quads, which are stretching because of this action of uh, pulling back on my legs. So it's really important that you're not stretching your hip flexor at that point that you get your quads because we're going to do hip flexors next so put one knee on the ground your uh for that one your toes on your other foot are up against the ground uh, if you see what can you, you can see what i mean um i've lost the ability to speak about the my heel my toes um your front leg uh your foot is forwards your knee is above it so you've got 90 degree angles on both legs and then with a good posture just push that hip forwards you're sending this hip almost like in a straight line okay so you're not like like with the hamstring stretch where you're folding yourself down, this is the complete opposite. This time you just want to push your hip forward and keep your upper body nice with a nice posture, okay? And this is what will help you with the stretch into the hip flexor. Because if you do lean forwards like this, I've completely lost. I'm getting nothing. I'm getting kind of like pressure into my front leg, but nothing else. And it's meant this stretch is meant to be up here for your hip flexors. Okay, so if you want to stretch your stretch your hip flexor. Stretch your hip flexor, okay? So let's change legs, do exactly the same thing. Okay, so nice posture, push that hip forwards, okay? And again, they would have taken from today's row between the, the fact that it was that low rate that um, you get the chance to concentrate on, but then with those five power strokes, your, your hip flexors, your glutes, your um, hamstrings, your quads will all have taken like all the brunt of today's work through there hopefully i mean again if you've got sore biceps and forearms your technique's probably in need of some work <laughs> right let's move on to those forearms okay so put your hands together in front of your face push them together and then down in front of your body so that your forearms are parallel to the ground and your fingers are at a nice 90 degree angle to those forearms, okay? And this will give you a nice stretch underneath your wrists, uh, kind of underneath your forearms and through your fingers as well. So it's a nice way to kind of finish off. I was doing, what was I doing yesterday? Farmer carries. That's where you kind of, you, I was holding two 24 kilogram uh, um, kettlebells. God, I completely lost the, the name of them then kettlebells one in each hand and then kind of walking so the whole point is 200 meters of walking and when you're walking with that kind of weight in your hands you know like this at the end going oh, i can't move my fingers and so i was doing this stretch to get into like that forearm part and my fingers that were getting so it's very it's exactly the same feeling as the row when you're walking like that that kind of if you yeah if you're doing it wrong if you're doing the row wrong it's the same as doing the farmer carry right that makes sense? <laughs> okay, let's do our shoulders. Hands straight out in front of you. Uh, bring your arm across your body nice and straight. Hook your other arm around it to just help with that little bit of a force against your body so you're getting a good stretch through your shoulders, okay? Um, yeah, sorry. See, sometimes I go down, I start talking about something, go down uh, this kind of blind alleyway and then I suddenly open my eyes and go, actually, I'm talking rubbish. This has got nothing to do with rowing. So yeah, so the farmer's carry hurts uh, just from kind of walking around with these uh, kettlebells. The pain you get from doing that is a pain you don't want in rowing. If you get the same feeling through your forearms and stuff, it's because you're kind of pulling against it. And I guess it's because of the bounce as you're walking with the, um, I'll change the arms and I'll demonstrate again, but as you kind of, as you're walking, um, especially if you're trying to do it at pace, with these kettlebells in your hands, there's a kind of a bounce to them as you're walking from uh, step to step. And I think that bounce is the same 
as if you did an early pull on the rowing stroke. So I've talked before about how you come on with straight arms and you don't want to do like an early pull, okay? You drive with your legs and then you pull fully at the back. And I think that walking with kettlebells, as much as I've got my arms straight, for each step, I think there's that little kind of bounce and that's what then gets me. So it feels the same. So, uh, so at least it's a, it's a good indicator. I know if I feel that when I'm rowing, I'm doing it wrong. So <laughs> let's do biceps next. So hands behind you as though you are flying. You're one of the Red Bull people. They've not been in touch to ask about sponsorship. I'm so disappointed. And then rotate your thumbs outwards. Okay, so this kind of stretches out your, the, or uh, yeah, it stretches the, lengthens, that's the word I'm looking for. <sighs> Should I have a dictionary in front of me? Make life easier. Uh, lengthens the long head of your bicep and that then gives it a nice stretch. Um, but at the same time, it contracts your triceps, which is why I do the triceps last, because it's them a chance to open up. But yeah, but that rotation of the thumbs is key here, and it's probably good for the wrist as well. Although, yeah. Right, what did I say? Oh yeah, triceps. Oh, good okay, grief. <laughs> Triceratops, oh, triceps. So let's do triceps as the last thing. So hand up in the air, bring it down your back. Uh, or into your hood in my case, I'll do that, yeah, yeah. And then your elbow is pointing slightly up in the air, but then use your other arm to help it all the way so that it's pointing straight up in the air. Uh, and then if you want to have a slight lean to the side, that will help you stretch your lats and your obliques if they are tight. Now, I can, I've been doing this, I started doing this last week after I'd done a really tough session that really hit my lats and it was really sore. Now I feel nothing when I do that. So it just shows either that stretching has helped, has changed arms, or that it was only as a co cause of um, the workouts I was doing that at the time that I had tight, tight lats. It was nothing to do with the rowing. Uh, something triceps still feel very tight. Doing this you can still feel that kind of stretchy burn. <sighs> what is the word for that? The sensation. It's almost like a sting, but again, that's negative. I don't want it to be a negative connotation. A zing, is that better? Yeah, muscle zing. Would you call that for a stretch? Or as I stretch, I get that good, good stretching zing feel. Yeah, and that could be today's hashtag. Okay, let's try and proliferate that across the <laughs> fitness community. They'd be like, what? Yeah, so hashtag zing, Z-I-N-G, okay? Um, or you can even put stretching, stretchy zing. You can put zing, 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 whatever you want. But uh, just to let me know you got this far through the video and you put up with this rather rambly stretching session, you can use the hashtag zing as you're posting how you got on with this, either whether it's a comment on this video or whether it's on the Facebook page or whether it's in a reply to the Instagram posts or Twitter posts that I do uh, about these who knows, just get in touch, let me know you're out there. Because uh, after all, I keep on making these because um, I look and go, oh look, a few people have watched this and I'm hoping it's helped you. So I will continue to make them while anybody watches them. Even if I got two views in a video, I know that still two people out there have watched it and it's hopefully helped. Okay, if I start getting zero views, I might stop. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Let's hope that point never happens. So uh, I will see you regardless, because we've got to make 30 of these. I'll, I'll see you in row 19 if that's where you're headed next. Or maybe you're going to go and look around at the rest of my channel at some of my other workouts or technique tips or app reviews or other rambling nonsense that I have here. It's not nonsense. It's all TV gold, I tell you. Um, yeah. So until one of my other videos, uh, um, yeah, that's all that's left to say is, is goodbye, really. So take care of yourselves. Be well. Bye-bye.